What's the creepiest thing that ever happened to you? I was 10-ish having a sleepover at my house with a friend. We played games, watched a movie, ate junk food, stayed up late, the works. Eventually, we get tired and go to sleep in my room. We both fall asleep, but a few hours later, she wakes me up because she needs to go to the bathroom. I'm super confused because she knew where the bathroom was. We'd been friends since kindergarten, and it was literally a door over from my room. She insisted, so I got up and took her to the bathroom. She said she wasn't feeling great. She was never the one to get uncomfortable, so I asked her what was wrong, but she said she just felt like she couldn't sleep in my room that night. I told her staying up later wouldn't help her feel any better and we agreed to go to bed. Bathroom door open, I turn out the lights pitch black. We start walking back to my room and she follows behind holding my hand and suddenly I start feeling uneasy. When I say it was a door over, I mean maybe a whole 10 paces or so. Again, not that far, but in the span of a couple seconds, I went from feeling fine to feeling sharp prickles on the back of my neck and a bad feeling in my gut. We get to my room door and in the darkness, I see an outline of a tall figure shifting and a gentle squeaking sound. I felt cold and hollow and I knew it was looking at me because when I looked in its direction the squeaking stopped for a second my friend was clenching my hand and not breathing and I told myself what all adults tell themselves because I wanted to be brave for my friend it's nothing I reached out a hand and flipped the light switch to turn on the overhead light and there stood a six foot tall man frozen staring at me with his hands in the air one holding the glass orb diffuser that goes over the light bulb the other on the light bulb and he turned his hand a little and unscrewed the light bulb it went pitch black I flinched and waited but we heard nothing nothing moved or squeaked or rustled I flipped the light switch off, then on again. My room lit up and everything was normal. No person, no overhead light taken apart, nothing. We searched my room for him, which didn't take long to no avail. I was on the second floor, the shades were still drawn, the windows locked, screen in the window. We checked downstairs in the locks, but they had been locked after dinner by my parents and we hadn't touched them. I asked if she saw him, despite knowing we were both looking for him. She said yes, and it was nice to know it wasn't just me that saw it, but I never had an explanation for that. My dog has been doing the most terrifying things and I have no idea what to do. Please bear with me. Everyone will probably think I'm crazy, but I couldn't make this up. I hope posting this online will be a good start. My dog Otis is a relatively friendly Belgian Malinois with a tendency to get bitey when he gets nervous. To be honest, I never really liked him. I don't like to talk about it, but I'm sure you can piece together what happened when a clueless toddler and a nervous Belgian Malinois mix. I've had a scar ever since. A few weeks ago, my parents left me alone with just Otis and a few packs of ramen noodle cups to keep me company. I I had my own phone so I didn't care. I decided to get out my laptop and do a little gaming while I had the opportunity and I heated up a fresh cup of noodles to eat. It was nice to have a little downtime to myself and that was when I noticed it for the first time. As I booted up the game in the deafening quiet of a relatively empty house, I heard it. You are alone. It sent chills up my spine. It was raspy and hard to understand, sort of quiet at the same time. It came from directly behind me. I ripped the headphones off my ears and turned to look behind me in a panic flurry. Who's there? I asked. No response, just silence spare the shaky sound of my panicked breaths. The only thing I could see was my dog, staring at me with those dead eyes of his. Did I imagine it? I didn't think so. Otis, did you just talk to me? I asked. I felt dumb saying it, but I couldn't help but try. As I expected, no response. My day was ruined. I pulled out my phone to text my mom about it before I heard it again. I say hello. This time it was quieter, but a little more clear. I looked back at Otis to see he was standing on his hind legs with his chest puffed out, like a deer with chronic waist syndrome. It was terrifying. His eyes were directly on mine and he slowly sauntered towards with great difficulty. What the hell, Otis? I yelled, scrambling backwards off the couch. He fell from his two-legged walk and ran down the stairs with impossible speed. I was stunned. I knew there was no one I could tell. I had no evidence, no footage. They would think I was crazy. I would too. If someone came up to me and told me their dog talked to them while standing on his hind legs. It took me a while to go and check where Otis was. I was afraid. I sat in the living room, unable to do anything but look around and check for signs of life. I decided I was going to text my mom a vague call for help by just telling her she needed to come home and that I would explain later. I knew she wouldn't believe it if I told her Otis was talking to me and walking around like a human, so I waited. I eventually built up the courage to walk downstairs to check where Otis was. I slowly walked down the steps, each creak in the old wood making me slightly more afraid. And what I saw was the most harrowing thing I'll ever see. Otis popped his head from above the doorway and hung upside down, staring at me right in the eye with an uncanny little toothy grin. And he just hung there staring at me, and I didn't even scream, I just stared right back, unable to move, unable able to think and he said one thing and one thing only and I will never forget it not until the day I die he said no one will believe you